Hello, and welcome to the Eurowhat, episode number 47 for the week of April 15th, 2019. I'm Ben Smith, and I'm joined today by Mike McComb. Hey, Mike. Hello. And our special guest, Lindsay Weber. Hello, Lindsay. Hi. We are a bunch of Americans trying to make sense of the Eurovision Song Contest, and this week we'll be talking about the first six songs of the second semifinal. Welcome back to the show, Lindsay. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to start uh, cramming for the Eurovision contest, which is very soon. But I feel like this is the right time to get started. Yes, we are about a month out. So it everybody has like figured out their their details. We now have artists flying into Tel Aviv to film their postcards for this thing. Wow. It's a great time to dive in. Yeah, and all, all of the songs are locked down, so we're not going to get, like, all of the weird remixes and bad decisions. Like, all of the bad decisions have already been made. So. Yeah, I think I'm most <laughs> frustrated when it's, like, it's unclear what the song is going to be. Like, I just don't want to waste my time listening to songs that aren't going to go through. Like, I just need the final playlist, and then I'm ready to, like, get prepared for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So you were at last year's contest, right? Yeah, so were you guys. Yes. It was great. I, I'm so happy I went. I would have not gone this year, so I'm glad that I like it was the perfect place and the perfect time. And I had a great time. It like wasn't even that expensive or unwieldy. I encourage other Americans to go. People will think you're a freak, but like in a good way, I think. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, It was great. I had a great time. It's such a weird made for TV thing. But I feel like everyone just goes to get drunk and like hang out, which I appreciate. (laughs) Like sports. (laughs) Yeah, one one of the hidden secrets of the contest. Uh, So uh, which which shows did you see live? We went to see one and it was the one I don't know, like which one it was a semifinal. Mm -hmm. And it was the one with Norway because we saw Norway live, which was thrilling because I loved the Norway performance. Okay, yeah, uh, I think that was the second semifinal. Yeah, that guy was a weirdo, and I loved Finland <laughs> too. the The one with the boats, he was cool too, because we were obsessed with um, "This Is How You Write a Song" like the whole time as a joke, but then it became real, you know, like you yeah. cross over into being like, "This song actually rules, and we love it." So it was great. I mean, I had I had just like the best time being in Portugal, and I feel like that also bled into Eurovision. Like, what a great excuse to go anywhere is like I get why people like sports now you know like yeah. <laughs> you know like you should use this as an excuse to go visit the country that is hosting Eurovision absolutely yeah part of the reason that we kind of connected uh, is uh, you host a podcast do, do you want to tell us a little bit about it that is true in case you guys forgot I host a podcast called who weekly and we just talk about all like the people you've never heard of who line the you know covers of magazines and tabloids in your grocery store aisle but one of the things that we've you know loved to talk about is Eurovision because it's truly like international who's I mean they come from all walks of life all countries have the voice and everybody all these voice winners coming together from across the globe to enter Eurovision now and it's just one of our favorite things to do is to is to like cover this for at least one episode and I'm really excited because I'm gonna have a party this year uh, at my house and awesome. make everyone come and watch it with me. Yes, it, it is. It is the best. But yeah, and like a couple weeks ago, Rita Ora oh, uh, yeah. is now dating Alex Sparrow, who is Apparently. Russia's 20, allegedly. 2011 entry. I would say heavily allegedly because the story okay. was so stupid. It was like <laughs> she met him somewhere and he went up to her and I think hit on her and was like, I want to take you on a date or something. And she probably was just being polite, was like, sure, whatever, like, <laughs> leave me alone. And yeah. then he was like, I can't get her number. Like, her manager won't give it to me. And it's like, yeah, no wonder. Like, you're yeah. a random guy. <laughs> yeah, Alex, join the club. Yeah. Um. <laughs> like, I would like Rita Ora's number two, but like, she's yeah. not going to give it to me either. So yeah, I think that was like a weird TM spun story you know mm-hmm. but he's fascinating oh yeah he's he's very fascinating i was trying to remember uh, that entry before the show and was just looking at his wikipedia and like he has a bunch of weird film credits yeah and and also i did not remember that song i had no clue it existed but i saw him yeah. on i watched his season of unreal and he's like pretty good i mean he's he plays basically himself i think like i, I don't think it's that far off from himself but uh, he's he's not terrible and he's pretty cute. So whatever, Rita could do worse. Speaking of Eurovision on US TV, or I guess not on US TV anymore, Logo no longer has the rights for airing Eurovision. And the way that I saw it initially reported was that they made it sound like they negotiated the rights away instead of it just being like, um, yeah, there's just no deals here because I think only 75,000 people watched last year's show. Yikes. And that was the highest rated of the three years that they... Mm. Uh, 
uh, mm-hmm. aired it. So no word yet on if there's going to be another network that's going to pick up Eurovision. I'd be kind of shocked if that I, I would be shocked. Yeah. My cable package has never had Logo. I know. Mm. I was going to say, like, not to be rude to Logo. Actually, I don't care. To be rude to yeah. Logo. <laughs> yeah. Who, who watches Logo anyways? Like, uh, is Eurovision really their lowest rated thing? Like, I highly doubt that. I don't think that they have much else going on currently. I just think that they were like, we don't have the money or marketing to put behind this to make it successful. So why would we even like spend money on it we need to like figure right. something I, else out. i feel like viacom has been trying to sunset logo for like a couple yes, years totally. so it doesn't surprise me that they didn't like totally. renew their option to to show eurovision for three more years once logo lost drag race they it's been like kind of a downhill situation for them i think yes yeah, i don't think they have any original programming at no. this point like it's all like mama's family and golden girls reruns yeah and, totally yeah. Totally. You know who could pick it up and be really good? I don't know if you guys know about the channel Pop. They're like, they have, oh, yeah. they okay. have Shit's Creek. They have like all this kind of pop culture programming and a little bit of fun syndicated stuff. I think they would be incredible. And they, they're they about building their brand. So they would be really good. Well, yeah. yeah. And like send send like Dan Levy as, as commentator. Yes. Oh, man. That yes. would be perfect. People need to put a little marketing behind this. I, I think mm-hmm. that people would watch it. I don't think – I think a lot of expats that live in America didn't know what Logo was and didn't know how to find it. Like, I think there's communities that would totally watch this and not just gay people. <laughs> like, yeah. It's definitely well, – like, the, the internet as a whole has been taking notice of, of Eurovision more and more each year. So, like, there is an audience. You just need to stick it in a place where we can all find it. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even if that was just you – as a network own it on streaming and you stream it live and that's how we get it. I, I even think that might be easier for people to to find you or whatever because instead exactly. they're just trading around links to like illegal streams or streams with, you know, VPNs or whatever. Like now I'm kind of like, how am I going to do this? But mm-hmm. you guys made a good point that this means that Eurovision, if there's nowhere in America that you can watch it, might just open up their like pay Yeah, gate. hopefully they just reopen, they, they stop geo-blocking the, the YouTube stream. Yeah. Because it's, it's the easiest way to find the competition. And currently, if you want to watch it, you have to have VPN access so that it looks like you're not in the U.S. Yeah. So that would be better, actually, than anything mm-hmm. involving anyone on, in America picking it up. But I feel like we need our own American song competition within the 50 states. That would be really fun. Kind of like a Miss America. But you're like, I think mm-hmm. that would work for us. But I don't we're not ready for Eurovision. <laughs> no, that I can't picture that being as fun to watch as Eurovision is. No, you're right. I mean, we take this stuff too seriously in a way. There's a total disconnect in terms of what we would want from a song competition and what Eurovision is, I think. And it would never, it would never be as delightful. Exactly. Yeah. I, like it would just have that industrial who wants to be a millionaire yeah. feel. And mm-hmm. it's like, no, no, like you need, like you can have that, but you have to balance it out with like RuPaul's Drag Race mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, meet the press. Right. I, how do you even take like geopolitics and like put it in what we, yeah, it would just be impossible. It, it's so special that you could not replicate it here. Yeah, like you're not going to get any like hard fought battles between like Ohio and Indiana. Or, <laughs> I mean, like... <laughs> I mean, we say that now. <laughs> true, Look at sports. True. Look at sports. I mean, I don't know. Like, there's so much history behind Eurovision too that adds into it. That like, if you started from zero now, it would just be hard to get that like institutional kind of emotional draw that you have. Like, you know, the relationships between the countries. Mm-hmm. In other news this week, uh, the full album is now available uh, on your Spotify's and your iTunes and your Amazon Music Stores. And there's even karaoke versions. Perfect. Which, I mean, like, if you really want to listen to the karaoke version of Montenegro's entry, you can now do that. I recommend that. Uh, it is a journey. I, I'm not going to join you on that journey. I'll just trust you there. All maybe right. uh, but yeah, maybe yeah. you'll find, like, new songs that you didn't realize you liked because you – the the lyrics or the singing is distracting and maybe you're like oh wow like the music is actually beautiful what you know i didn't realize exactly that. this is beautifully produced <laughs> i mean it has changed my opinion on a couple of songs uh one of them we will be talking about today it did not it kind of reinforced my opinion uh mm. notice the tone of voice change <laughs> but, uh... Uh, and then uh. well yeah so that that happened and then just all sorts of of updates coming out of the israeli delegation uh Gal Gadot is apparently going to be at the at the final in some sense, whether that's just like, here, here is Gal Gadot standing outside the arena and mm-hmm. we're done, mm-hmm. or if she's actually going to appear on stage, we don't know. 
nothing's been said. I love that. I think that's great. I mean, she's genuinely famous. That is a cool mm-hmm. get for them. I mean, Wonder Woman is an international successful m- movie. Like, that's really cool. I mean, at Portugal, there was no one like famous that we would have heard of that mm-hmm. was there. This is like a totally different vibe. Well, yeah. Also within the hosts, I think Bar Raffaele is part of that. And like, she had some Stop. level of, Yeah. She talks. That is going to be wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we need to figure out which which of the four hosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there. Okay, there are too many hosts again. Yeah, uh, but we need to figure out which one of them is getting assigned the French. I mean, Israelis are loud and boisterous and wonderful people. I think it's going to be such a fun thing. But it's so funny that Bar Raffaele, the like silent Leonardo DiCaprio ex girlfriend model, is involved in this. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. Can't wait. Should we get into this week's field? Yeah. So last week we finished semifinal one. So now we can cover semifinal two in the order that is going to be happening. The first six songs, uh, those include Armenia, Ireland, Moldova, Switzerland, Latvia, and Romania. And kicking off the show for semifinal two is Armenia and Serbuk with Walking Out. Some fun facts about Armenia's entry this year. Serbuk was an internal selection. I want to say she was one of the first announced artists this year. Yeah, I think she was the first one. Was like the oh. first one. Like yeah. I remember we were discussing in like December mm-hmm. that, oh, hey, this person is going to be part of the contest. And then they were like one of the last songs to be released. Yep. Uh, she was a runner up on Armenian X Factor in 2010 and then placed fourth on The Voice of Ukraine in 2018. And then the song, Walking Out, was uh, written by the co-writer of Not Alone, their entry from 2014. I did not know that before this week. And now that I listened to the song, I can definitely tell. I can tell it's the same author. Yeah. It has the same feel. I don't remember that song, but I I like this song. I think she's good. Like, I think this is not terrible, honestly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I don't know. It's for a mid-tempo moment, for a not like an upbeat. I always go for upbeat, but Mm -hmm. this is nice. She has a really good voice, and it's a weird aesthetic, like Mm -hmm. a cool aesthetic. She's really funky looking. Like, I, I support this. Mm-hmm. I was getting like kind of Sarah Bareilles vibes off of this one. <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I could I could see that. But yeah, like I could I could see her doing I could see her trying something like this. I mean, I just feel like she is going to put on a good show because I mean, via the music video, I was like, oh, this has like stuff going on. I mean, it's not an interesting song. That's kind of the thing. None of these songs are very interesting. Gotta say, <laughs> in this mm-hmm. list, <laughs> in terms of lyrics and concept. Like, I have to imagine that this was the hardest half of the, like, the four halves of the semifinals that they had to schedule out. This one had to be the most difficult because it's just, it's a lot of very slow ballady type yes. songs. And, like, they didn't really have a lot of options for what's going to open the show. They need something with, like, big energy behind mm-hmm. it. And, mm-hmm. I mean, that leaves Armenia, Romania, Sweden, and Switzerland. They can't do Switzerland because it's too much like Cyprus, which is opening up the first show. They can't do Sweden because it doesn't really come in with a bang. They can't really use Romania for reasons I'll get into when we talk about Romania. Uh, So like it it was. So it's this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like one of those like logic puzzles where it's just like, oh, like Mrs. Hernandez and Armenia did not buy the blue shirt, you know? (laughs) So Mm -hmm. by process of elimination, this one is there. Yeah, I'm. Now that you mentioned the Sarah Bareilles part of it, it's like, huh, that does kind of make sense. And this does feel like it has a lot of Armenia's aesthetic where it's just kind of like a sort of atypical pop structure, but Mm -hmm. it works. Yeah. I'm a sucker when I can hear like a country's influence on the song. Like it has Mm -hmm. like a moment of like I sent I just texted Bobby a Norway's entry because uh, he would liked last year's and it's it's very kind of boring but then the the chorus has like a weird norway echo in it like they they kind of incorporated some of that like scandinavian thing in there which i mm-hmm. i like when they do that when it's like kind of an otherwise normalish pop song but then it has kind of some weird very you could tell it like belongs to the country they want to put a little bit of it in there and don't they want they don't want to freak you out but they want to put a little bit in there i completely agree yeah like with, with this one it 
I was wondering what it would sound like in Armenian, um, just right. just because like lyrically it's a little awkward yes. uh, in English. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, their song was in Armenian last year and they did not qualify. And so I have a feeling they're just kind of gun shy about like, that, being yeah. not yeah. English. Yeah. So, I get it. Um, I get it. But I, I want to like it more, but I think it's... I think it's good enough to qualify. Oh, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, I definitely have it as qualifying, but I wonder about it in the larger field. Mm-hmm. Eurovision in concert, one of the promo events was a couple weeks ago at this point. I thought that she did a, a really good job with the live performance. It was it was comforting to see that, that she can perform this well live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wonder in a larger field of, like, all 26 entries that qualify, how does this do? I honestly just... It sucks because when it's in English, it's good because then I it's it's better for our ears just naturally. But then it's mm-hmm. also bad because the lyrics become like kind of gobbledygook and you're like, well, there's no way that they're going to choose this song that has like no deeper meaning or purpose because, you, you know, you see who wins and there's always some sort of like, here's why this is meaningful, you know, or here's why this is of the time or something for at least right. what I've seen. And this has none of that in it. I don't think it's just nice, I guess. Yeah, I, I totally get that. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's just missing yes. that sort of X factor. Right. Like it could come in aspect. top 10. I'd yeah. be like, fine. But, you know, I just feel like it's going to it's gonna get edged out by something that has some sort of story behind it that feels important or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. Although, I like one thing, I, I feel like Armenia probably also got a nod to, to open this because I feel like they take this seriously. Yeah. Like their oh, performances yeah. the, last, I agree. the last five years, like they, they don't mess around. They try to stage their stuff well. Last year was kind of a weird blip for them but yeah although i i love that song and uh but i totally understand why it didn't qualify like it was uh it was in a tough field so Mm -hmm. (laughs) all right then let's move on to ireland and sarah mcturnan's 22 anywhere i go reminds me of the things we used to do and i dreamed about the street where we kissed out of the blue with your house number 22 So this one is also an internal selection. Sarah McTurnan placed third on The Voice of Ireland in 2015. Uh, She tried to compete in San Marino's selection process last year, uh, but she didn't make it to the actual competition round. What? Uh, She she may have dodged a bullet in that. Yeah, San Marino's (laughs) selection process last year was just kind of a mess. Yeah. Yeah. That's also just so strange to even, whatever. I mean, I don't know any of the rules, but that's crazy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it was was a contest that was open to, I think, anybody in the world. Cool. (laughs) Yeah. Like, we we should have entered, but uh, we did not. Uh, did not get our thing in the mail in time yeah. but yeah the song was originally intended for a male vocalist but since the field is mostly male vocalists this year uh, i think switching that up was a good choice but maybe not bragging about the song like, being yeah, intended just... for somebody else was <laughs> yeah yeah uh, maybe it's... just sit on that until you you're through ireland do yeah. you think do they think that's gonna work for them it's like oh we're doing it's like we're making an equal we chose a woman like yay or whatever i don't know that's so strange yeah i mean i think they were trying to do it to sort of stand out but then they're in a semifinal where like the first half is all female soloists so like i think i think it was kind of a no-win situation best of luck to you yeah also calling your having your song be 22 there's a taylor swift called 22 Mm -hmm. it's so much better than this song i know obviously it's better than the song but like what a like Ugh. Like it doesn't even compare. It's just hard for me because I'm like, what's the point of them using 22? And then you read the lyrics, and I'm I don't even understand. I don't even get it. <laughs> like, truly, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, for for me, this one. Remember a couple of years ago when somebody slowed down Jolene mm-hmm. to one third speed or something, mm-hmm. and uh, it uh, sounded like Justin Bieber. Yes. For this, it sounds like they took a Megan Trainer song yeah. and did the same thing, <laughs> oh and this is what we got. This one, since it was first released, has grown on me a little bit. I'm still not sure it's going to qualify, but I, I kept trying to like mentally place like the the instrumentation on this, and I think now that you've said it, Mike, slowed down Taylor Swift song hits it on the head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not Taylor Swift, a slowed down Megan, Megan Trainer song yeah. hits it on the head. The guitar line sounds like a bunch of songs from 1996 to me, like oh, uh, yeah. like like No Mercy's Where Do You Go, uh, OMC's How Bizarre. Uh, <laughs> even wow. Kind of a little, yeah. I, I went down like a rabbit hole trying to figure out what does this sound like to me. I yeah. love that. Um, and also like a little bit of like the guitar in Everything But the Girls Missing. Okay. Okay. But all, all just right. like very 90s guitar stuff. Yeah. yeah. And and this is one where like the karaoke track really 
highlights that because it's a minute of baseline. And <laughs> the other issue that I have with this song is the music video. Like, I, I really Ugh. hate the visual oh, yeah. effect I, that they Why is it that. like an Instagram? Like, it's so strange. Yeah. And then she, like, does this part where, like, she's singing, like, a power note and, like, holding her hand. It's just, like, holding it back. And it's like, it just looks so affected. Yeah. That it's yeah. just, ugh. Like, there's will, just nothing sincere about it. I this. mean, I just, like, I can excuse a not so great song if the visual if the performance if the music video if it's weird if it's interesting if it's like mm-hmm. compelling like you really can like balance it out like the song doesn't have to be incredible if the visuals are like it's stunning and this is like bland and bland like it's just not fun I feel like we have so much bad music like this in the United States like I don't need it mm-hmm. from Ireland and also Ireland has so much good like music that is theirs that is so fully theirs and there's nothing of that in here you know mm-hmm. Not that I need, like, a fiddle, but come on. Like, give me something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, and what's disappointing for me is that from, like, again, that amp- that Eurovision in concert a couple weeks ago is she has personality. Like, she mm. was trying to get the crowd going, and, like, she can perform this live, and I'm not sure, like, why they are packaging this in the way they are, where it just feels very overdone and very bland. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I have to wonder if, like, the delegation has just kind of abandoned this entry. <laughs> which just kind of happens yeah. every every wow. year. Like there were just a couple of delegations who were just like, well, we put out a song. Best of luck to you. Bye. That yeah. <laughs> I, we will not be returning your phone calls. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm worried that that may be happening here. I mean, mm-hmm. that sucks. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Ireland. We thought we thought you were on the mend. Uh, well, yeah. Last yeah. Year. Last year was great. I don't know. Like, I would like to see them kind of lean into like this. And this is something I've mentioned, I think, the, the first time we discussed this song. But. The song does have kind of a retro vibe. Maybe, mm. like, lean into that with a live performance, but give it some personality. Because I think I mentioned, like, Duffy last time from, like, 2007. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like lean into that. Like, tease the hair. Or give me some, like, clogging. I don't know. Like, yeah. modern day yeah. clogging. Or, or, like, like, yeah, exactly. Make it fun. Like, make it, I don't know. Uh, get me, you know, like, that musical once. Like, give me some of that. Like, something. You know, these are, like, I studied at Brown Ireland, so I, like, know four things. But, you know, those are... <laughs> Those are things when you go to Ireland and you hear traditional Irish music, there are elements of that that could be worked in and modernized. And like, this is just not it. And people have got got to be more creative or something. Pick someone Mm -hmm. off the street, you know, and like make it really cool and weird. Don't have some, again, like watered down Megan Trainor uh, kind of copycat. Like, I don't even know if the retro performance is going to work because she performed the song on, I believe it was Ireland's version of Dancing with the Stars. Mm. And yeah, they were like trying to go for like 50s beehive. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I saw that video, like a 50s malt shop vibe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it worked at all. I mean, it's, I think part of it is also just the song drones. Like there's no, there are no peaks or valleys. Yes. And yes. it's just, but it's still kind of going downhill the whole time. There's no it's, build up. There's no, yeah, there's no, there's nothing. There's no drop. There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. true. There's a reason the song is in the two spots. Yeah. So. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Sorry, Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> are we? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we are. Um, I don't care. <laughs> so next in the running is Moldova, Anna Odebescu, and Stay. No matter what they say, it's now or never. Uh. Okay, so, yeah, so Moldova does a national final. Uh, Anna Odebescu uh, auditioned for the voice of Russia. This is like the third person who auditioned for some voice. Uh, but anyway, she auditioned for The Voice of Russia in 27 and 2018. She also tried to represent Moldova in 2018. So last year, where she finished fifth. I, justice for last year's Moldova, justice for Dora Dose or whatever, the most iconic performance. I didn't get to see it live, but like that video of them with the behind the scenes, I will forever mm-hmm. cherish. They're hilarious. That was like, that was one of the examples where the performance elevated the song and now Absolutely. i love this song and they should have come closer last year they were incredible yes. what a great time and this is boring and, and, you know. and also what is this <laughs> yeah and this is boring and what did you like come back re-enter they those guys two, they have had two really really good years in a row because uh, yeah. a couple years ago we had sunstroke project where they brought back epic sax guy for hey mama and that was yes. great and they came in third oh my god that was incredible yeah <laughs> that was incredible it was amazing, it was amazing. Uh, like Moldova does like these 
I, I keep referring to them as like wedding songs or yes. like, that one had kind of a weddingy vibe. Yeah. Uh, My lucky day felt very weddingy. And then like they do this. So clearly there's just... like somebody over there who's smart, who has who has like strategy. But what happened this year? I don't know. Like they took a break or. Yeah, ex- exactly. They need, yeah, they needed a break. Yeah. And we have this and it's mm-hmm. just it's bland and it's mm-hmm. there. Mm hmm. I think this song would have done really well in, like, 2009 or 2010. Like, it wouldn't have won or anything, but it just wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, this is a really good power ballad. But, yeah, this just feels so out of place in 2019. And she will be working with Sunstroke Project for the staging. Yeah, and... but what are they going to do? Yeah, there's not. Uh, it's, like, this so song. slow and dull, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, hey, Mama, like, that That was a fun one. That was very easy to figure out. This is... <laughs> This is very different from either of their last couple entries. Yeah. And to have a slow song, it's just like you have to elevate it so much to make it fun. Like you're already at a deficit, I feel like. And so I know it's unfair, but like either you have to have the most amazing voice or just some like really dramatic, fun staging. And unless they do that, I don't know. It's like going to be boring. (laughs) It's going to be boring. I'll forget it immediately. Well, this was one uh, in the national final. They didn't have like an actual wind machine available, so they had they had a couple <laughs> of box fans. That. Stop. Yeah, so I kind of dare them to do the same thing. If they do that, the I'm down. Stage. If they yeah. do that, I'll, they can have me back. I'm I'm down for that. If they have yeah, two like, box oh, fans man, blowing yeah, like, this I'm, woman's hair, <laughs> I'm done. I am I am immediately on board if they have like two backup dancers that are holding two box fans each. Yeah, <laughs> two or women if, if fanning her. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm down. Okay, fine. Great. Okay, yeah, Good like idea. If, uh, only if that happens. Maybe they yeah, ran I'm... out of budget from last year. They're like, we put in so much effort for this thing, like this crazy thing we put together and no one, we didn't win. We're going to give this woman some box fans. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> we spent all of our money last year assembling that really cool IKEA yes. wardrobe. Yes. And it didn't, we didn't do, yes. get anything. All those doors? Come on. That yeah. was custom. That was a custom piece. Good Sorry, luck, Moldova. Uh, yeah, yeah. Moldova. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Uh, this, I feel so disappointed because Moldova is usually one of the countries I root for. And like this year, it's like, nope, you're dead to me. <laughs> yeah, this lineup, I got to say, not great. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of stinkers in here. I feel bad about it. Yeah. Uh, should we move on to Switzerland? Oh, my God. Speaking of stinkers. <laughs> OK, so uh, Switzerland will be represented by Luca Hanny with She Got Me. Oh, Lord. When she go low, when she go low, she goes low, she goes low. Oh, she know, oh, oh, she know, she got me dirty dancing, dirty dancing. This one is, though, I don't know if you guys dabble in like the odds pages, which are, you know, they I, just, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They no, give I, you a, I did. Yeah. like, yeah. It's high up or it's higher up than I expected. I mean, I heard this and I was like, oh, this is dumb as hell. But I don't know. I think this one's higher up than you would expect. I do not understand why. Last I checked, it was in third. That's uh, it had been, crazy. It had been up to second, I think. That's and... insane. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, there, there was no reason for that to be the case. So, yeah. so Luca Hanny, he, uh, he was an internal selection. This is the first time Switzerland's done an internal selection in forever uh, because they've not been successful in forever. He won Deutschland sucht den Superstar, mm-hmm. uh, which is basically German Idol, uh, in 2012 and got a recording contract out of that. Uh, more recently, he won a Nickelodeon Kids Choice Award in 2013. Yeah, which uh, I was today years old when I learned that there are like international distribution oh, Kids international. Choice Awards. International, okay, okay, okay. Not like, like that, he, that, 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 yeah. yeah, it's it, it's international. So sort of like how the Emmys has like local Emmys for your local news. Yes, mm. that's good. Yeah, I, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and he also won Dance, Dance, Dance in 2017, and I really want to try to track down that show so maybe yes, he's like title, an so. incredible performer like maybe that's what they're thinking about i saw the music video i thought it was stupid but maybe yeah. there's something that he's gonna do that's gonna be incredible like have you seen him perform live he was at eurovision in concert and that was uh a pretty dismal performance oh, Part of it, the vocals were not good but he was doing the choreography from the video pretty well okay okay yeah but it's just like if you listen to the karaoke track and this is what i was referring to earlier the backing track is almost all the vocals. And wow. like, like he's just doing like his like speaking part in the song. And even that was not good at Eurovision in concert. So, so forget I have it. no idea like why this is so wildly popular. Uh, and I think also just like in terms of how Eurovision works, 
songs of this nature really struggle at Eurovision. And I think it's probably because, like, even though he's sort of a good looking guy, he's not, he's not, definitely not my type, but uh, he's just giving off such hetero energy yeah. that I just, like, there's just nothing about this that I think is going to hit the, like, core demographic. He might have, and... like, a big fandom. That's the only thing I can think of is, like, he, he's, like, a cutie, and, like, it might be, like, that he just has, like, a lot of big fandom, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but you're I mean, right. I find him bland, and the song is so bad. And talk about a song with like no meaning. Like the the chorus literally is just "dirty dancing" said three times in a mm-hmm. row. That's the entire chorus. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, yeah, I it just I I keep describing this one as like reheated Despacito. <laughs> oh my god! Like uh, yeah, but like Despacito left out like for years and reheated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like moldy. Oh yeah, no, you left it in the fridge for like a week. <laughs> yeah, like very moldy. The chemistry has changed on this Despacito. There are a lot of entries that are copying Fuego from last year. And, oh, love and, that. And this is one of them. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, like this one is just not my thing. And yet I'm just like, okay, there are enough people. Like it's doing well. In the, I think it's going to get through. Yeah. I, th- I think it's yeah. going to get through. I can't see this winning. Oh, no. Especially if Cypress gets through because it's the same song twice like Mm -hmm. those two are going to just siphon votes off of one another Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean whatever this is like it's this just sucks i hate like a young i hate the like setup for this because i just it's just a bad Mm -hmm. song and i know it's gonna be it's gonna get attention it's gonna just but like it can't win i'm saying that of course i have no idea it can't win (laughs) i can't see a path to victory for this one because i I can't imagine that juries are going to be really into it, unless it is an amazing dance performance. Right. But I I think part of the difficulty that he had at Eurovision concert is just, like, he does not have the stamina to sing and dance. Choose one. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. But unfortunately, he doesn't have that choice. Nope. (laughs) He has to do both of them. Good. (laughs) Yeah, so. Which I will will note that, like, that is one of the performances that Eurovision in concert has not yet uploaded. Oh, really? Yeah, like, I, yeah, because there are, like, three performances that, I don't know if they just didn't tape them, which would not surprise me because the videos are like from the back of the room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Like I had to go find a different video of that performance of that performance to hear how bad it was after you had <laughs> noted that, Mike. Oh, geez. I think this is just going to be one of those entries where it's just like it's going to do much better than I expect, and I'm going to be really mad. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> it I did I, much better. I, I, no, that's how I, I, I feel like, too. Yeah, I have earmarked this one as the one I'm going to be mad about. Right, because it's just not good. And I feel like there are other songs that are silly and catchier and well better written that are, like, equally stupid but better songs, you know? And, like, those should be the ones that kind of go further than, than this. You know, like, Sweden's song, right, is, like, equally kind of weird and dumb but, like, but like better written, like, catchier, mm-hmm. you know? Like, yeah. it stays with you a little bit longer. And I feel like that should get this spot. If there's one spot for this or two spots for this, like, it shouldn't be this one. It's not that good. <laughs> yeah. Like, this feels like Switzerland trying to be Sweden. Yeah. But, yes. like, the Sweden that, like, people don't want anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, and, like, I, I get it, Switzerland. You guys have you guys have kept trying to do external selections and kept coming in, like, 14th. I get it. <laughs> that gets yeah. frustrating. It's so but sad. But also do better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I mean, sure, surely they still have Celine's phone number, right? Right. Like... <laughs> For real. She would do it. I mean, that's weird, but she would do it. I think she, like, would think it was fun and do something. I don't know. Oh, that would be amazing. That's kind of on brand for her, honestly. (laughs) If Madonna shows up to do something, whatever, open that door, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have have rung that one dry. Um, Wait for the next one. It only gets worse. (laughs) Next, we have Latvia and Carousel with That Night. I barely got through this. This was suff. This suff. I suffered. Oh. <laughs> Do you like this? Well, okay, <laughs> uh, I, I I feel like I need to preface this. So last year I was a total Latvia stan. Yeah. Like, I like I was wearing my Latvia shirt. What was like, the song again? Remind me. Funny girl. Uh, the woman in the red dress, and it was kind of like the jazz ballad. Oh, uh, yeah, that was like, fun. That was fun. Yeah. 
That yeah, was fun. and yeah, so like I've become a real Latvia stan. Uh, <laughs> last, yeah, last yeah, you few have years. for like the last and two or three years. I love that for you. Too bad yeah. this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that this is what won their national selection. I think it was an interesting choice. Uh, it, it was a very weird field that they had to choose from. And I'm, I was surprised that this one won, but I do feel like it was the correct one to win. Mm. That being said, I forget about this song the instant it stops playing. I Actually, know. I was listening to it earlier and I forgot about it while I was listening to it. See, and that's the problem. Yeah. Like, it's not catchy in the slightest. It's like, a, it's like just a kind of a slag. Like, it just like drags on. You know, it sucks that like, because ballads can be catchy. <laughs> I just, you, mm-hmm. you forget that listening to so many of these Eurovision ballads because they're not. <laughs> it's not like there's anything objectively bad about the song this just feels like the wrong venue mm. for it oh, yeah, uh, totally. yeah i mean it's kind of like what i was saying about uh georgia's entry last year where it was just like oh ethno jazz band iriao and like they're like accomplished musicians who have won music festivals all around the world and it's like yeah your song is the opposite of a pop song right and i feel like this is kind of in that category where it's just like yeah if this were like a jazz competition or um like an acoustic competition mm-hmm. i think it would do really well but mm-hmm. In a bombastic environment such as Eurovision, like this is just going to get completely drowned out by everything that is happening around it. Right. I mean, I always yeah. think of like the Portugal winning song and how to me that was like so boring, but it had a story. It was mm-hmm. it was important. It had it had roots. It had like and so I always think of that when I hear songs that are slow and boring. Does it have any of that? Could that be something that we grasp onto? But this doesn't have that either. No, it's it's just kind of there. Yeah. I feel like the positioning on this one is not going to be kind to it because they are mm. fifth in a field of 18 entries. And they're between Switzerland, which, despite our opinions previously right. stated, is going to, is is going going to qualify to and is going to be yes. loud. popular. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Oh. And, and Romania, which is going to be loud and dramatic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and True. so we're going to come to this at the end of the, the 18 songs and see it in, in the clip show and go, oh, right. You're going to forget it completely. Yeah. Exactly. You're going to forget it. Yeah. Totally. I respect that Latvia continues to follow the beat of their own drum, but that drum continues to get them decreasing returns every year. Aww. Yeah, yeah. I I would actually be shocked if they use the same selection method next year because it's just not Sup- working. Yeah, Supernova yeah. was a Supernova like when they first did it, and now it's not quite working. Yeah, it works when Aminata is is, is writing the song. But... <laughs> uh, sorry, Latvia. <laughs> Wow, it's been such a sad run. It, yeah, like so. The last one that we're going to celebrate today <laughs> is uh, Romania's entry by Esther Piani. It's on a Sunday. This is better compared to the rest. Is that like weird to say? Like, this is not terrible, I thought. And I like, she's weird. I love her spooky vibe, a rom- spooky vibe. Oh, yeah, Romanian like I love vibe. the vibe. I had not watched the, the official video. I'd just been watching like the, like, the performance from the final. And that video is bonkers. Yeah, it's uh-huh. weird. It's scary. It's Romanian. I mean, I'm famously obsessed still to this day with the Romanian yodlers. They, yeah. <laughs> they, they brought me into this competition very much so, like really helped me come here and like love it and so I have a soft spot for Romania but I also feel like they have a good sense of humor about stuff and like Mm -hmm. this is fun you know I like this one up until like the third verse and there's still this kind of sense of like oh this is still going on like there's like <laughs> mm-hmm. there's no Fair. there's no key change there's no yes. like it, it's just kind of repeating the same pattern and then it goes into the warbling part and there's like no exit strategy <laughs> going on i don't know like the thing i like about this is that it feels like the lot the whatever they do for the staging feels like it has a lot of potential from yes. like the national staging they showed us two different things that both felt interesting and dramatic in a way that last year's performance from them didn't and I think, like, Romania is one of the countries where, like, except for last year, they had always been in the final. So I think they're kind of hurting from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just like, there's a lot of opportunity to do something spooky. And I think they're the country, one of the countries that will actually go for it. And I hope that they do. Because, like, the song could be pushed over the edge with, like, something weird, you know? And they seem mm-hmm. like they're they're down. So it's cool. Yeah, especially if they're able to bring in video effects and, like, 
try to make it more of a ghost story, yeah. sort of like in the music video. Yeah. Like the guy oh. who came out of the coffin. That was sick. I don't even like yes. that song was like fine. And then the song was amazing because he came out of a coffin like that mm-hmm. rules, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Love that do guy. that, Romania. Yeah. More come of out that, of a coffin. <laughs> Whatever. And I think. Its position will help with the exit strategy problem just because it should be going into like the first commercial break. So mm-hmm. uh, people won't necessarily remember that it's like, oh, she's just kind of trailing off rather than like actually reaching a logical conclusion. Yeah. Uh, and after the slog of songs, maybe it'll be it'll be like a bright spot, you know? Exactly. Just like yeah. finally. Mm-hmm. It's true. As we were looking at how, how the running order shook up, like my concern was like, ooh, Lin- Lindsay got kind of a well, a bad draw. Can here. I run <laughs> so. by you some of my favorites from overall and you guys tell oh, me absolutely. what yes. you think? Like it can just be quick because I'm so curious what you think because some of these are just like so fun and I'm so excited. Like, first of all, I'm like, love Iceland like I I'm obsessed Uh, (laughs) with this I think that they could win on this like it is I want them to win so badly okay good I'm so glad because like I think this might be my what I'm rooting for because like I I've never heard anything like this it's so fantastic and so weird and good and catchy and scary and great so I love that Mm -hmm. And then um, I feel you, like. Have you seen them in interviews? No, are they insane? They are delightful. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm so ready. I, I will send you a bunch of links. Please. I've, I've been like evangelizing Hatari to oh my God. all of my friends. I, and Iceland <laughs> deserves it for this entry because this is like what they should be bringing to the table. It's perfect. Um, I liked for like a gay anthem. I liked Cyprus. Like uh, replay is. It sounds like mm. you know old news, but I it's fun. I don't know. Felt fun. And uh, I also thought Malta was really cool. The chameleon one? Did you guys hate okay. that? I have a Mike has about issues it, but... with it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of love it. <laughs> it's weird. It it I don't like for me. It just feels like something I could hear on like American Top Forty Radio any day. Which is like good. Which, which, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is. A I huge mean, it's not why I come to the Eurovision Malta, Song Contest. So. Though. Fair, it's, fair, I, it's, fair. It has nothing that feels Maltese about it. It surprised me in the chorus. I was like, "Whoa, we went here!" Like it had a fun twist. And then I thought Portugal is like out on a like out to sea, but I love it. Like Portugal's oh, yeah, they, yeah, like they are doing their own thing. They are like we we already won. We gave we're giving up, but in a cool way. I love that. That's so strange. And I you know who I love too. Greece's entry is so yes. cool. Yes. Do you guys like oh. her? She's yeah, I love her. Sick. Uh, like I I love her. So before the song came out, they had compared her like the, in like the promo copy for for her as an artist. They had mentioned uh, Leaky Lee and Jesse Ware and somebody else, where they all just felt like three very distinct artists that I don't necessarily associate with one another. Mm-hmm. But then the song came out. I'm like, yes, I hear Jesse Ware. I love Ware, her voice. And then I hear like Annie Lennox. Yes, her voice is crazy. The song is slow but good. Like it's the it's actually a good slow song. It's catchy. The aesthetic is on point. Like it's everything. And then the one that I feel like I like, but I feel like could go really far is the Spain is Lavenda. It's fun and like mm-hmm. poppy and like he mm-hmm. seems cool. Like I liked his vibe. So yeah, but I think I'm rooting for Greece and Iceland. I think that's my two. Mm-hmm. I think that's where I've landed as well. Definitely Iceland. Uh, Greece is up there. I'm not sure if it's my number two yet, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I, I need to do those r- rankings again. Yeah. Are uh, there any, What am I missing any that you guys really love that I should go back and, and do, do a double take? I guess like the arcade is the number one. People really like that, but I don't know. It was slow it's, and fine. It's fine. I, could, I, I, I get why it's popular. Yes, but I also could see something like Hatari as a dark horse that like gets second with both the televote and the jury and wins. Like I hope so. It a few years ago. It's I would love. So yeah, good. It's so good. I I think I could just go all the way rooting for that. It's going to be so fun to see live and like if they're cool guys, like then it's just going to be great to watch them. Uh, let's see. So other ones I'd maybe recommend uh, Azerbaijan. Although mm. their their song is when you listen to the lyrics, it's weirdly over the top. I really like Albania's entry. Mm-hmm. Like that one was the first one selected, but like they're keeping it in Albanian, and uh, the woman singing it just has an amazing voice. Okay, and it's yeah, it's just a really powerful performance. Okay, great. I will check those out. Uh, I think we can all just agree that Iceland is going to go all the way. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> and if Eurovision is in Iceland, I'm going again. I don't care. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. If, you, if Eurovision is, not, is in Iceland, I'm going for the first time. So I'm, yes. I am That pumped. is, it would be incredible. And honestly, Iceland like needs it. That would be perfect. It would be great for them. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode of the Euro What. Thanks for listening. Uh, special thanks to our guest this week, Lindsay Weber. Lindsay, where can folks find you online? 
you know, just the Who Weekly podcast. We will do our own Eurovision episode eventually, maybe closer to the the date of the show. More of a cram session versus a slow burn like this amazing podcast is. But I can't wait to talk about it again. It's so fun. The Euro What is hosted by Ben Smith. That's me and Mike McComb. That's me. You can find us on our website at EuroWhat.com and on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at EuroWhat. We'd love to hear your questions and comments. You can subscribe to the Euro What on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or the podcast app of your choice. Rating and reviewing the podcast when you subscribe also helps other Eurovision fans find us, so please do that. We'll be back next week to try and make sense of what's new in Eurovision. 